called to order this meeting of Monday, August the 10th. If the clerk would please take the roll. Council Member Archibald? Here. Council Member Ashford? Present. Council Member Beaton? Here. Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Pemberton? Here. Council Member Warden? Here. Mayor Rep? Here. 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 <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. You have before you the minutes from the regular meeting of July 13th and the special meeting of July the 30th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So moved. Madam Chair. Support. Thank you, Council Member Ashford and Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Is there any additions, deletions, changes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will stand as submitted. We will move to public comment. Now is the time if there's anyone in the audience who wishes to address the city council this evening, you can come forward to the podium. Please give us your name and address and you do have four minutes in which to speak. Hi, um, my name is Kathy Solomon. I live on Jenkinson Street. And uh, what I wanted to ask about tonight was I know that right now the city council is working on deciding ordinances regarding the uh, cannabis and as someone who lives next to someone who has fully invested their backyard into growing it, it is an extremely pungent and unpleasant odor and I would hope that some of that would be taken under consideration that maybe there just isn't enough room um, to grow that in a city lot. Um, and I know, I'm sure that you all know I sent you an email saying, you're very welcome to come. <laughs> but I would strongly suggest wearing a mask with a fabric softener sheet in it like I do when you go outside. And <laughs> it's, uh, it's very unpleasant. And um, we're on, I think, our third or fourth crop this year. So I, I'm wondering if maybe what we need to do is realize the size of a lot, and especially with rentals, because this in one of the houses in particular is a rental, but it's all the way around me that people are coming to me and saying, what, what am I supposed to do with this? It isn't very pleasant. So I'd ask you to consider that as you look at those ordinances and rules. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council? Thank you, Madam Mayor and the Council. My name is DJ Palm. I live on Lyon Street here in Port Huron. And I just wanted to get the opportunity to formally introduce myself to you folks as a candidate uh, to be the next leader here in Port Huron. Uh, watching all of you over the last 18 months, I've learned we care deeply a lot about the same things, our country, our community. I've learned consistency is definitely present here in Port Huron but I believe consistency is needed elsewhere. I'm gonna give this council three answers to the one question all of you have. Why am I running against our Madam Mayor? Reason one, I'm running for some dear friends of mine that represent two thirds of my battalion that didn't make it home from Baghdad with us. One lesson in war that I've learned is that no matter how great leadership is, new times and new situations need new leadership. That is where I believe Port Huron is. Reason two, I love Port Huron. I love Port Huron so much, I spell the word family with a PH, like you would phone. But no matter how much Port Huron is family to me, Port Huron is in Michigan to me right now, currently. Port Huron is America. Barely. I mean, we're not a map, we're still in America. I'll reveal in a future episode, four minutes long, how each and every one of you I consider family to me. Reason three, we have some great legislators here, but not all of you know how to play politics, which I believe is the reason some of you don't want to play them, because you need a coach. So put me in, coach, because this is a game I can play. Because we have seven legislators right now who can't figure out how to politics selling weed into legislation probably because none of you have ever sold weed a day in your lives. I'll tell you what you need to sell some weed. That'll be for a later episode on this platform only. I have talent for this game of politics, which politicians forget their job is to legislate. I'd rather be a legislator. So for those who play politics, I mean, we can play. 
But I don't play like Carl Rove or David Axelrod. I learned from the best, Roger Stone. And I'm a Roger Stone type that wants to all be on your side. I really do. And if you really want to sell some weed, I mean, Port Huron can get Roger Stoned as much as it wants. Because I can politic that into some legislation, not policy. Politicians force police to enforce policy, written and signed, enforcing personal agendas and not the law. That is why politicians are losers, and losers don't legislate. Politics is perception. When you make perception more real than the truth, fictions and facts will never matter either way. I don't know what type of mayor I'll be. I just want to soldier up for Port Huron and lead the way. So here's an idea of how I'll start being a mayor. Chief Platzer, you have my sworn oath to the Constitution that if President Trump or if Governor Whitmer tries shoving police reform down my throat here in Port Huron, you know what I'm going to do? Nothing. I'm going to tell both President Trump and Governor Whitmer, you need to come here in Port Huron and see how my chief models his department. My chief ain't reforming nothing. He's got it on lock. Episode one will be soon. This is just the prologue. November's a long time away. So is this series finale. Thank you, Madam Mayor and the Council. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the Council this evening? Seeing no one, I'll declare public comment closed. We'll move on with the agenda, the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Ashford. Take the vote, please. Number seven? Seven. Sure. Go ahead. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. The items on the uh, consent agenda were receiving and filing notification that the annual conflict of interest statements have been reviewed and no discrepancies have been noted accepted grant funds and approved the development project agreement as received from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources under the 2019 Trust Fund Grant Program in the amount of $50,000 combined with a local match of $67,000 for the purpose of constructing new inclusive play equipment and related amenities at Gratiot Park and authorizing the application of a burn jag program at fiscal year 2020 grant in the amount of $18,413 for the purpose of obtaining grant funding to use toward the purchase of a live scan fingerprint machine and acceptance of any grant funds if awarded. We'll move to then from the city manager, item one. Accepting the bid from Spartan Paving LLC in the amount of $559,860.22 for the removal and replacement of miscellaneous concrete curb and gutter and street resurfacing of portions of 11th Avenue. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Pemberton, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there any discussion? Yeah, yes, um, Councilmember Ashford. Just referencing, this is uh, one of the Pazers already uh, made the case for this. Okay, and where is this in line? Do we have a plan of listing that we're going to a priority? <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, yes, we use the PACER valuation to ensure that we can maintain good roads uh, for a longer period of time but through what we call asset management, which is strategically spending our resources. Uh, we do the PACER studies so we know which roads we try taking, you know, the politics out of it, and we try using data-driven approach to address which roads need to be milled and filled. And so this is one that met those qualifications based, uh, based on the evaluation it was planned for. Okay, so you do have a priority list that you Correct. are attributing to. Yep, and any citizen can go to porthuron.org slash open government, scroll down, there's the PACER map. You can actually see all of our ratings online and you can actually see what the priorities are for the next couple of years. Because I see you have another PACER in here that we're going to address later on. Okay, yep. thank you. Any other questions, discussion? We will take the vote. 
Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two. Accepting the bid from Weiss Construction Company, LLC, in the amount of $2,211,880 for odor control system replacement of the sludge storage tanks at the wastewater treatment plant. Is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem, everybody's talking in unison tonight. Mm -hmm. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Beeden. And due to the size of this contract, I'd like the city manager to give us a little background on it. Please. Absolutely. For $2 million, we'll give yep. it a few moments here. Uh, so uh, our director Witter is here to go into some technical details if you'd wish, but the odor control system, it's not just for smell of the downtown, although this greatly reduces that. It's also because of the corrosive nature of the elements inside the building. So it's an employee safety issue, but it's also you have millions and millions and millions of dollars of electrical equipment, of air venting equipment. And I think over the last couple of years, we have brought numerous replacements of venting within the wastewater plant because of the corrosion that's taking place. So that should address this, this to a very significant degree. We had budgeted $1.3 million. Our portion is going to come in about $1.49. We will adjust our capital spending and look, use some of our fund equity to cover that. Um, so it is a, a, significant, a significant difference. Um, but we are using some of the latest technology. It's a little bit more expensive to put in on the on front. Uh, however, the maintenance and operating costs in the out years makes it the best, uh, the best valued system. Our engineers traveled around the state to look at what other communities have done, what's worked, what's the new emerging uh, technology, and that was all factored in here so we could, something this large, we want to make sure we've, we've done it right. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Councilman and then there's Harris. also allocation of the, the townships. Correct. As you, as you know, we are part ownership with Fort Gratiot, Kimball, and Port Huron. They own capacity within our, water, our wastewater plant, so a proportion of this cost will be billed back to them. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions while the city manager is standing there? Yes, Council Member uh, Warren. Um, I was kind of, uh, in, in, again, this is the wastewater treatment plant right over here, and one. The, uh, the scent often, depending on which way the wind blows, sometimes is pretty strong. Um, so the one question I had is this new technology that states it's going to be doing the ion, ion exchange system, this new technology. And I'm just wondering what other cities uh, ahead of us have already might use this ion exchange system instead of... I'll have Director Witter speak to that as he did site visits elsewhere. And again, this is going to be transitioning off the chemical treatment eventually. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, the first question, Council Member Warden. Um, there's a facility completely in close similar to ours down in Georgia. Uh, we weren't able to tour that one because it's out of state and the whole COVID situation. Um, but this company's been around uh, the equipment that's being used for quite some time, mostly in industrial settings and that sort of thing. And there was a facility within Michigan that wasn't completely enclosed, but their head works being where everything comes in, typically one of the most odorous areas, had one of these systems on a smaller scale installed. So our consultant and our wastewater staff visited that facility, got their input, and it seems to be working well there. So the name of the city slips in my mind at this time. I can follow That's up okay. if need yeah. be, but um, there's a smaller facility in Michigan that has a similar type of system. So when I read this, we're going to be transitioning when this is all completed away from some of the chemical treatment of the So yeah, the goal, the goal here is um, one, because of uh, the sheer cost, and two, uh, the aging, existing odor control system. We chose being the solid storage tanks as the one that's the most odorous, to make that phase one. Um, it looks like they're, at this time, it looks like possible three um, phases of implementation of odor control, but we have some other capital being the grit channel project that's forthcoming that with its grit removal, could possibly lessen odors too. So we didn't want to get too far ahead in design until we did some other capital that could possibly um, change the characteristics within the plant. Well, I appreciate the, how thorough, um, and even given this background in writing, I really appreciate given the uh, the history and what this uh, what we're trying to get to the get up to date on this and try something new. 
um, for and that. And the other so. advantage here to the existing system is one large system that pulls air from all the various operations within the plant. Under this phased approach, you'd have multiple equipment serving different processes. So if you had to maintain one or an issue became one, it's not the whole plant losing odor control like the current system when you have issues. You lose all the odor control within the plant, not just um, specific locations. Hope the technology works. Thank you. Any other questions while Mr. Winter's standing up there? Nope, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. We will take the vote. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three. Accepting the bid from Talto Contracting Incorporated in the amount of $463,722.50 for the 2020 concrete panel replacement project, which consists of 16th Street between Howard Street and Gillette Street and 24th Street between Dove Road and Cleveland Avenue. Is there a motion? S support. Council Member Ashford, supported by Council Member Pemberton. Is there discussion? Mayor Up. Council Member Warden. Um, again, always one of our goals and priorities is to uh, try to continue to fix and upgrade our roads. This is just another, um, this is curbs. And um, what I wanted to ask is this work is, when it has the uh, driveway approaches as well and the sidewalks, if we go down this um, this area, the street that's under there, they're gonna, are they going to be replacing sidewalks regardless if needed, um, regardless if the, the curb or the or this or the um, the road is not needed at that place? No, both the panel replacement and the sidewalk and curb and uh, driveway approaches will all be as needed. But I mean, yeah, okay. So as the side, the the actual road cement panel replacement is needed here two houses up, the sidewalk is completely disintegrated, but the road looks okay. Are we going to replace that sidewalk? No, we're focusing on the, the roadway itself. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mayor Rapp. Yes, Council Member Harris. Uh, I really don't have any questions on this, but I think the fact is it's going to be close to the uh, Howard Street area, 16th and Howard and Gillette. It's very significant. This has been on the to-do list for the last five and a half years. Hmm. Good news. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? We will take the vote. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item four, please. Accepting the bid from Telto Contracting Incorporated in the amount of $108,425 for the Gratiot and Kiwaden meter pit replacement project. Is there a motion? So oh. moved. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Is there a discussion? Mayor Rep. Councilmember Warden. Just one quick question. Uh, just recently, just in, might have been early spring, there was something right there, I think, I don't know if it was at Keywaden or if it was at Kraft and, and Gratiot where there was a, maybe a water main break or some type of a break. It wasn't anything to do with this, was it? No, that was in front of a resident property just north of, between Kraft and Keywaden. Okay. It was a storm sewer or sewer main that was collapsed, and so we had repaired that. I did sign an emergency order for that at the time. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't know if this was, yep. but I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other discussion? We will take the vote. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes, item five. Approving the bid from Niles Construction Services Incorporated in the amount of $46,550 for the 
for the painting of the North Service Center Booster Station and other miscellaneous painting. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Ashford, supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Is there any discussion? Yes, when was the last time we did? Mayor and City Council, as far as the uh, North Service Center piping, it's my understanding it has been done quite some time, if not ever before. Um, there's a, some surface wash piping within the water filtration plant, and a number, a few years back, we had projects within the plant to paint piping. That piping was identified, but for cost reasons, we couldn't do it. So, uh, having a much smaller project being a North Service Center, we added that as part of the project and got bids on that to do that with inside the water plant so after the last four years of painting all the elevated tanks and the ground storage tanks and a number of years of painting the plant and now doing the north service center we're probably in pretty good shape for painting anything within the plant does that help with the corrosion also or did yeah it just, I, it just got to the point yeah. where within the plant the the plant is has a dehumidification system so oh. corrosion isn't as plentiful but um, it does happen but the north service center doesn't have the same type of system so you do get a lot of condensation and moisture that builds up with the different change in air temperatures and the water itself building up so thank you you're welcome <clears throat> any other questions comments mayor Rep. council member warden uh just looking at the the amount of bids that came in um here on this and of course a couple asterisks but uh, you know some of the bids on these things are ninety seven thousand dollars <laughs> And then uh, again, this is uh, because of the competitive bidding. We got it down to forty-six thousand five hundred and fifty for this project. Um, I just uh, w appreciate that you're put, getting, encouraging these guys to bid. I just uh, like to see the benefit there for the city of Port Huron tax dollars when we're dealing with these type of, uh, with these type of projects. So thank you. And we did have our consultant, by the way, look into Niles, and he's worked with them in the past and said that they'll do um, a good job. So we did check out to make sure that they. Are a reputable contractor and can handle the work. So, because okay. there was such a price difference. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I would just point out to the mayor and council, just for clarity, we don't choose what gets bid. We have a purchasing ordinance, which is adopted by the mayor and council, which dictates that we must bid out these types of projects. So we don't pick and choose what we bid. We are required under law that you all pass to do competitive bidding. And along with the lowest bidder. Correct. Yes. yes. Thank you. There's nothing else. We will take the vote. Council Member Warden. Yes. Council Member Archibald. Yes. Council Member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Council Member Harris. Yes. Council Member Pemberton. Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes. Item six. Accepting the bid from Jones Equipment Rental in the amount of forty-three thousand five hundred fifty dollars and sixty cents for a Kubota skid steer loader for use by the streets division. Is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibalds, is there a second? Support. Council Member Beaton. And mm -hmm. go ahead. Madam Mayor and Council, this, uh, our current skid steer is 27 years old. We have used it quite heavily. Wow. So we had budgeted $84,000 out of the motor pool fund, so you're only going to use about 43 uh, five for that. Why is it so much less? Why? We, got a deal. We, got, we got a deal. I know. It's just, we asked me too high. I, no questions. Don't ask you questions. Know. Just take the deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is nice to see that they were all within the same wheelhouse between 43 and 50. That's yeah. pretty small margins. Okay, any questions, discussion? We'll take the vote. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes, item seven. Accepting the proposal from Panchera LLC in the amount of $12,950.60 for the purchase and installation of a new swing area at Lincoln Park. Is there a motion? So moved. moved. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tim Archibald, supported by Councilmember Pemberton. 
think I got you this time. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Mayor and Council, as you are aware, and a lot of people have driven by and excitedly see the new improvements going on at Lincoln Park. Uh, thanks to the gracious uh, uh, contribution from the Atchison Foundation of $50,000, we were able to do over $100,000 playscape being installed right now at Lincoln Park. This follows up the new, new basketball, basketball courts, courts that have been redone, redone a new, uh, what do you call it, zip line, play equipment, some new climbing things that look like pine trees there. One of the things we've realized when we were down there is that the current swing sets are just very old and don't meet current safety standards. So Nancy, always swinging for a deal, was to be able to convince the company that is installing the, the, the new playground structure to supply swing sets to be replaced. By going with Penchera, who has a good record with the city for a couple playscapes now and is installing it right now, we can avoid mobilization costs. Since they already have their crews here, they're already here, if we authorize the swings, uh, so it is a single source, but it's because we can avoid the mobilization cost by going with Penchera. So when it's complete, you'll have brand new swing sets, a brand new basketball court, a brand new playscape, thanks to Dr. Atchison and the Atchison Foundation. Um, and uh, the new zip line. So it's really an, an incredible redoing of that entire play system, but it just seems kind of crazy that we do all that and then we have these janky swings there that yeah. need to be fixed. So it was an opportunity to get this done and that's why we wanted to bring it to you. Good. Is there any questions? I don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, yeah, and, I, and I've been down there, and this, uh, th at least this, this play, this is part of our bigger plan, the recreation, where Nancy said that she would be doing all the, yes. the uh, playground sites. But what's so significant about this, what I like, is the flow of the, the equipment and the cohesiveness that, that breathes a playground area and the safety component around it, and I think it is a, a great, great addition. It's so a big structure. And Huge. right after Dr. <laughs> Dr. Atchison's own heart, it's yeah. after a ship. And it looks like a giant ship. So when you yeah. see it, I've never seen a play structure quite like this. That is a Out massive world. Yeah, a massive yeah. ship. You go down there, it's got the bow of a ship, it's got play structure. So it's very unique to our community, but very fitting for our community. But again, uh, this would not be possible if it wasn't for the generous contribution of Dr. Atchison and the Atchison Foundation. Great man. Thank you. Sarah? Yes, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Where are we on our list with, with the upgrades for the par various parks around the city, and do we have a timeline on when we think we might? So get Nancy to those? has prioritized, I believe, 11 different parks. We're addressing. We addressed Knox. We addressed. This is Lincoln. Gratiot is later on your council agenda tonight, and we are currently sourcing funding for the the remaining uh, nine. So it's going to be a big project. We'd like to leverage our general funds with grant funds. Um, Nancy and I have talked about maybe we try knocking out several of them in one year, maybe do something really big uh, because we're now realizing with COVID and lack of travel that our, our parks are really our, our, our really a good outlet. There's better, parks and recreation has never been more relevant in our community than during the COVID crisis, whether that be our, uh, the, the innovative rec packs that Nancy has done, giving thousands and thousands of recreation packages to families and kids across the city having quality safe and parks recreation within a walkable distance, enhanced crosswalks to get to those parks. So we're really seeing COVID bring out the necessity to continue the relevancy of quality parks and recreation in our city. So we will develop a plan to fund the rest. So it's easy to make a list. Mm -hmm. The question yeah, is how you're you gonna, gonna pay fund for it. it. <laughs> if there's money out there, Nancy, we'll find it. <laughs> That's true. No doubt. <laughs> Councilmember Warden. Uh, yep, thanks. Just uh, take a moment here again uh, to thank Nancy and actually everybody involved in this is keep pushing forward and not only the grants and the rock the block to help out with that, uh, you know, brings community together and uh, when you bring a bunch of people together to uh, one cause, we, we can make uh, great improvements. And so I want to thank you again even for thinking about this additional piece to add while it's all being worked on. It's going to be outstanding. Thank you. Any other comments? We will take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item 8, please. Accepting the bid from Serve Pro for as needed decontamination services of city owned facilities and vehicles due to COVID 19 exposure. Is there a motion? So move support. Councilmember Ashford, supported by Councilmember Beeden. I wonder if 
the city manager could give us a little bit because I'm not sure that I understand the base charge. Yeah, so what this is is um, we have, when we first got to the COVID crisis, we began cleaning, utilizing ServPro uh, to decontaminate the police department, the fire department, and emergency vehicles. Um, FEMA was accepting of that for reimbursements under, under the emergency uh, declaration. However, FEMA does want us to get back into our normal procurement processes to get reimbursed. So moving forward, if we want to use these processes, so per our preparedness and response plan, should we have a COVID, uh, a COVID case within the city of Port Huron, within one of our departments, we have procedures in place for cleaning and decontamination following that exposure or confirmed case. To get reimbursed through FEMA for that, we need to do the typical procurement schedule. So we did bid this out, so we have no plans to use it unless we need to use it. Um, however, the base fee, it is just simply a base fee for them to show up. Uh, however, uh, Jarvis uh, did not do that. So I can have, is Corey here? Corey will explain the difference in the, in the things. He did bid them out, but the reason for it was a FEMA reimbursement. So if done right, we will never actually have to pay this out of pocket. It should be reimbursed. And do we get our money back? Yeah, oh. yep. Mayor and Council, uh, in addition to serving as your fire chief, I'm also the emergency management coordinator for the city. I'm recommending that CERB Pro be uh, accepted as, as far as providing decontamination services. This is both for city-owned facilities and vehicles. So when we look at the charges, uh, there is, like the city manager spoke to, there is a base charge. Uh, so every call out will, at a minimum, be that charge from CERB Pro. Uh, in Jarvis's bid uh, specification uh, proposal, they did not indicate or any price or even indicate a zero, so it was basically an incomplete bid from Jarvis. Uh, in addition, uh, once we get over that base level square footage, you'll see that Surf Pro has a lower square footage charge. Uh, in addition, uh, some of the light fleet, uh, for instance, a patrol vehicle or a service car with uh, the building department, uh, carries a fee as well. Uh, in addition, some of the a vehicle uh, fire apparatus size or one of the DPW vehicles uh, carries the heavy fleet vehicle uh, charge. You'll see in the Jarvis uh, price bid that they were also uh, re requiring a 10 car minimum. So if we had an exposure in one vehicle, we would be charged for the equivalent of 10. Uh, so uh, with the current reimbursement process from FEMA, we are submitting on a three month rotation and we're expecting 75% uh, of that reimbursement cost back to the city. So it does behoove us both to subscribe to these requests by FEMA and Michigan State Police uh, that we return to our normal procurement process and there still is a 25% uh, coverage that uh, we will incur so it behooves us as well to get the best price. Thank you. Is there any questions for the chief? Nope. Mayor Oh, I guess there is. I just, Councilmember Warden. When you said the rotation there, you said a three-month rotation? Every three months we are submitting to FEMA. Okay. Okay. All right. So I really appreciate with this uh, virus that we have uh, coming around uh, uh, still out there, we have to be proactive on this and to try to look to find, uh, you know, if we can get FEMA reimbursed and go to the protocol to keep it safe. I think it's smart to have this as a safety precaution. So thank you. If there's anything else, so thank you, Chief. We will take the vote. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to resolutions. Number one, please. Authorizing 12 payments. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Ashford. Is there any questions on the payments? Mayor Rep. Council Member Warden. I just had one. It was uh, set aside here. It was the water filtration plant maintenance garage project that we've been holding off on and trying to get it. Looks like it's finally getting finalized. There was some problem with the rafter and then uh, having to redo bricks on the outside. I know they did it at their own cost to redo it. And then we're having trouble with the roof leaking. 
So is this pretty much now up to, is, yeah, we, is this stating that it's all done and it's working? Yeah, so y you see here that we did some design changes on this, and so that's mostly the reason for the change orders. After the design process, we required some more stuff we want to see done to it. Um, it is pretty much done. We had Zimmer Roofing do a little work on some membrane work there to take care of the last remaining water issues, but it's in good shape right now. Yeah, and I, you know, I drive by that just to kind of check on it. I noticed again we don't have, it looks like there's not a driveway yet, you know, into the garage door from the, from the little, I don't know if it's from the street or the, or the parking lot there in Pie Grove Park, but is that something that... Uh, we'll, we'll get that done with our concrete contract. Yeah. Thank you. Any other? Additionally, there's a massive change order for $215,000. That's because when we went in to do the work um, at the wastewater plant, um, we realized that the primary cables, which were the most expensive component of that $215,000 as well, was the primary cables need to be replaced. DTE would not connect until they were replaced because they were in such bad condition. You're referencing a change order? Yep. Yeah. Is there anything else? <clears throat> Council Member Harris? No. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item two. Approving the agreement with St. Clair County Community College to assign one police officer to serve as college resource officer on the St. Clair County Community College campuses for the 2020 through 21 college year. Is there a motion? So moved. moved. Support. Council, Council Member Pemberton, supported by Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Is there any questions, discussion? Mayor Rep. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Just want to say I think this is a wonderful program and I'm very excited to see it continuing and hope to see it continue in all of the schools as well. I know last year we had tremendous positive feedback about it, so thank you for continuing it and uh, hopefully. All goes well again this year. It has worked out well. This represents about a 2.5% increase year over year to cover wages of the officer. Um, just point, point of reference, for the last uh, quarter at the school, we did not build them because the school was not in session. We absorbed that officer back into our ranks and put them on road patrol, which they were needed on road patrol. Um, so I, we did not build them the full amount last year because I just didn't think it would be right if we weren't actually patrolling their campus to build them for that. Um, the Port Huron area schools were able to use their school resource officers even throughout um, the COVID crisis at the feeding centers and between the feeding centers to comply with their grants that help pay for that officer. But for SC4, it was unique and we did not do that. We do expect that officer to be back on campus this fall, though. Any questions for the city manager? Okay, so, uh, in there, uh, so this is the dedicated position that we took the officer from yeah. here over there? Correct. Okay, so it's not, uh, okay. So is there any overtime involved in that or is it a straight ship? Or it's, a straight, it? it's a straight, it's a straight, it's a straight, uh, straight shift, but if they need overtime, the contract does have in there for like baseball games, basketball games, and stuff like that. If they want to have an officer there, there is an allotment in there for that. Have that been used? Um, Chief Platzer may be able to speak to that. Have we used overtime in that contract? Very little. Very little. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> Any other questions, comments? Mayor Rep. Council Member Warden. I d again, just want to, this is a great uh, uh, partnership with St. Clair. County Community College and the City of Port Huron and uh, the outstanding uh, uh, police department that we have um, to provide this uh, resource officer, um, which is uh, on their on their campus uh, uh, for safety, but also share the cost. Um, I just want to make sure I uh, thank again Chief uh, Plantzer for this and also the St. Clair Community College for reaching out and coming up with this uh, great idea that we're going to be continuing. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? We'll take the vote. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beeden? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three, please. Authorizing a 10 year lease for monthly use of meeting space, commonly referred to as the Memorial Room, to the Blue Water Chamber of Commerce contingent upon final approval of the final lease agreement and a memorandum of understanding from the Michigan Department of Transportation regarding use of previously awarded mitigation grant funds to the Chamber of Commerce as part of the Blue Water Bridge Plaza expansion project. Is there a motion? So moved. Board. 
Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by, I believe, Councilmember Ashford spoke first. Madam Mayor and Council, during the Blue Water Mitigation uh, Agreement, there was money allotted to the Chamber of Commerce to expand spaces. They looked at doing their own space, but they have a great facility right now. It just lacks expandable meeting space, meaning they don't really have a big room to meet, to hold their board meetings and all that. So instead of going building out and doing their own thing, we were able to negotiate a collaboration with them where they can lease the memorial room for the next 10 years from McMorrin, providing $250,000 of new revenue to McMorrin over the course of 10 years. So this is a collaboration to get money to McMorrin to, to share space. There's no need to duplicate the wheel. So it's, we thank the people at the chamber, uh, the Thelma at the chamber and the board of directors at the chamber for uh, being willing to explore this innovation. Uh, also the McMorrin Commission for the, really putting the nuts and bolts of this together and getting it for you today. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Yes. Um, Go ahead, Councilor yeah, Ashford. Like ask uh, Nancy or maybe you know uh, in the memorial memorial room wasn't used that much anyway, was it? Well, it, it, it's the memorial room, actually, since, we, since the McMorrin Commission have really done a nice redesign in the memorial room, it's getting busier, but with the chamber, it's different times of, of what they typically need. The board of directors meets in the morning, whereas if you're in the memorial room, you want an evening, so the schedules really do marriage well together for what the needs of the chambers are versus the, the rentals of the memorial room. I think it's a good uh, <coughs> collaboration effort, you know, and partnership and keeping it there. Yeah. Absolutely. Very good. Any other questions, comments? Council? Yes, Councilmember Beaton. Uh, I would just like to thank James and Nancy for exploring that opportunity. I, as a chamber board member, I think it's great. I think she has a board of, I don't know, it feels like 20, 25 of us. So you think about those are the business leaders in our community coming and utilizing that facility, coming to our downtown. I think it's a great use of our resource and it helps financially support McMorrin. So thank you. It's a great opportunity. Councilmember Warden. Yeah, thank you. Um, again, same thing. I just had a couple questions. Um, uh, again, the memorial room has been all redone. It looks great in there. And um, to have the Chamber of Commerce right across the street and to be able to use this and to help us out uh, at the McMorrin, you know, with financially with these mitigation funds. Um, it's a 10-year it's deal. And when I read through it, they have their meetings. I'm just wondering, are they going to be able to at least allow to, if they have a a mixer or some type of other thing because they're involved and they show up to all kinds of things in uh, you know the city I'm just wondering if they're going to have um, any restrictions or they're going to be able to use that facility or just check the status maybe if it's scheduled or that's the, that's the nice thing about having a collaborative working relationship with the chamber they'll be able to work with McMoran staff on scheduling those events versus rentals so they'll work together on that but what you know would they have to uh, do you think they would, would they have to pay an additional fee if they yeah. Because, you know, here we're going through with that potential, you know, the whole thing out front uh, um, getting re revitalized. And, you know, this is just going to be a great centerpiece and a hub. Um, and I think that memorial room there to have them. So I, I want to say thank you to the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, uh, City Manager Freed, and also Nancy Liz, uh, Windsor, um, you know, for coming up with this. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Comments? Councilmember Warden? Yes. Councilmember Archibald? Yes. Councilmember Ashford? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Councilmember Harris? Yes. Councilmember Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item four. Authorizing a review of the city manager's wages to determine if any discrepancies exist. And this was requested by Councilmember Warden. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Is there a second? The motion dies for lack of a second. We'll move on. Item seven. Confirming the mayor's reappointment of Robert Arnold Jr. Jr. and Jeff Smith to the Planning Commission for terms to expire August 11th, 2023. Is there a motion? So moved. Councilmember Beaton, is there a second? Support. Councilmember Ashford. I'm assuming you have a question or a discussion. Correct. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up to the again because the fact is that uh, uh, three terms on the uh, Planning Commission are expiring. And as much as I think Mr. Arnold and Jeff Smith have done a good job, I think uh, Mr. Bond is going to be missed quite a bit by his participa participation on the board. I 
try to attend as many of those meetings as I can. I mean, he just kind of went into the, uh, a neutral balance to things that uh, a group like that needs. And uh, uh, I just hope that he's find something just as good to replace him. So that's my comment, so thank you. Yeah, we do need to replace him. He's moving outside the city, so he's not eligible anymore. So that's, that's unfortunate. That's a mayor's appointment, isn't it? Yes. A mayor's appointment. Okay. Yes. So we will be looking for that. Mayor up. Just board. to hear down here, but these two reappointments, the, the commissioner bond was it? He was not reappointed. He's actually resigning because he's moving outside the oh, city limits. Okay. Yeah, he was. I, I appreciated yeah. him too when I showed up to those meetings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hate to lose good ones. Thank you. If there's nothing else. We'll take the vote. Council Member Archibald. Yes. Council Member Ashford. Yes. Council Member Beaton. Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. That concludes our regular agenda. Uh, a couple of announcements. The city offices will be closed on Monday, September 7th for Labor Day. Wow, it doesn't seem like the summer should be coming to a close, but <laughs> there we go. And the next regular city council meeting will be September 14th, at which time we will start back onto our regular schedule of the second and the fourth Mondays. Um, also, um, I guess I hope everybody had an opportunity to view the 7th Street Bridge lights, which were start over just this past week. It looks really great. And the other two bridges are awesome. forthcoming, correct? Yes, that's what I was giving you up on Your stated goals and objectives were to get that done. Um, luckily, we already have a contract in place. When our, when our electrician retired, we kept our electrician on as a consultant and then was able to contract out with TMA, which is working out very nice because we only had one electrician. And as much as we worked Sparky, it was one guy, and he just worked. His, he worked so hard and such long hours, and it was just more than one one guy could do. So I have him as a consultant now, helping us out what needs to be done, having a whole crew of TMA to come in and the parkway lights, getting the Pine Grove electrical situation taken care of, so the outlets work at the different parks. So it's been TMA has been working out very great. Um, we have worked with TMA to light the 7th Street Bridge tonight. The tower will be lit. In the coming weeks, we will do the 10th Street Bridge within probably the next uh, 30 days. And then we will work with MDOT to get the Military Street Bridge lit. Um, the, the, the bills for these will go to the Water Street TIF, which spans all three bridges. So tax increment financing, not general fund, will go to, which it has to be spent on capital improvements to that area, um, will be done with that. Um, we sh they change eight colors based on holiday events and seasons. We're working on that now. Um, so they will be uh, up and running. So we got that done. Other communities spent north of $300,000, but because we were able to use our local talent, like Tim Ainsworth from TMA, he's a guy's been doing this a long time, and I was able to show them pictures. Uh, many of you sent pictures. Council, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Archibald sent me photos of different communities. We were able to get it done for about 8500 bucks to $12,000, debating on the bridge. Some bridges take more. Um, so we were able to do it on the cheap, and it's a subtle touch of class to highlight. Also, a uh, small tidbit of point of information, this week is the 90th birthday for the 7th Street Bridge. Oh, so wow. happy birthday to the 70th Street Bridge. I'm glad we could light it up after 90 years. Very nice. While you're standing at the podium. Yes. <laughs> That's a mistake, so you know. Um, can you give us an update on the social districts that we approved? Yes, we are waiting on liquor control. We are one of the first communities in the state, and we have not heard a peep other than they want $75 more for an inspection fee, which we sent them their check. Um, no other community in the state has heard a peep. I don't think liquor control knows what they're doing yet. So I think when they figure it out, they'll send us a letter. So lastly, before I get this weekend, we are having another rock the block with Habitat for Humanity and the Chamber of Commerce and volunteers from all over the city. If you would like to volunteer at rock the block, it'll be at Lincoln Park on Saturday morning. It's always a good crowd, very fun time. So it's a good community event. It is a very good event. Very good. Thank you. And then just one more thing, I was going to talk about the census, but then in talking with Council Member Ashford, she has it all together too, so I'm going to turn it over to her to give a little report on that. Okay, Madam Mayor. Okay, uh, the Mayor and I have been constantly uh, trying to keep you updated in terms of the 2020 census here and our status. Uh, it was originally, I have to make this announcement before I get to the numbers, so it was originally thought that the census count would be uh, ending uh, it had got extended to October 31st, but now uh, they're talking about they're going to end it earlier to um, September the 30th. And currently, the state of Michigan is tied with the 
state of Iowa at 69 percent, but the only caveat to that is that Michigan's goal was 84 percent, so you see we're quite a distance from our goal at 69. St. Clair County is 7.3 percent, the city of Port Huron is at 67 percent, and the congressional district, which we are in the 10th, is at 75.5 percent. Now, did all of our, our um, talk do anything? Yes, it did. I think we moved up about 5 percent points since from where we were, you know, so, you know, nothing beats a failure but a try. But uh, the only concern, uh, it's not probably other concerns that we do have is that by them uh, ending this, uh, if they should end it on September 30th, uh, we see that it will be a drastic undercount, you know, throughout not just uh, the state of Michigan, but throughout our United States and reaching the people that most need this, uh, need to be counted. So we're very much concerned about that. And so they have several groups um, advocating to try to get them to turn this around. So I don't know where that is going to go from here. But I just want to thank everyone that did go out. And if you haven't gone out, it's not September 30th yet, so we still got some time. So I'd like to encourage you all to go out or tell your friends or tell anybody who hasn't filled out their census to fill out their census. And then I have two other things. To sure, go on. ahead while you're there. Uh, uh, earlier, uh, when the COVID-19 uh, uh, was upon us, we had uh, a mercantile in from the uh, health department. And I'm thinking that uh, I would like to request of us, you know, for her to come back again. And I would like to uh, share with you our total cases to date here within uh, our county. I think this is, it, it was 824. And the deaths were 53. And the total hospitalization was 138 cases. And the total recovered from that 824 was 694. Now today we have three cases that are in the hospital, so it hasn't gone anywhere. You know, we, by the grace of God, we just we be thankful that we haven't got hit as hard as we did because we're, you know, I don't know if the mass or the social distancing, but I want to think all that makes a difference. But there is a flip side to this uh, that we were concerned about when we do our daily talks over the phone, you know, some other legislators across there. A lot of people are, you know, they're just going through a lot mentally, you know, and dealing with this, you know, having to wear the mask, uh, still having the feeling of being locked up, locked away. And so there, there's a mental health issue that's going on and, and, and you need somewhere to, to reach out to, you know, what can I do? I'm not saying we all, uh, all of us are getting ready to go crazy, but it's just so unsettling that you don't have the answers or, you know, what do I do? You know, it's just getting real old. So uh, that is, uh, I guess, my ask of the administration to get her back in here so she'll be able to shed some light on some resources that could help us, you know, still get through this because we really need that. And lastly, uh, I'd just like to, uh, to say, uh, we, uh, on Saturday this morning, I think about 8 o'clock, I don't know if we all got the call one after another. Um, I actually take care of my 97-year-old mom with my daughter. And, you know, when you get those calls late at night or early in the morning, you think uh, something's happened. And it did happen. I got a call. It was from a regional manager of Domtar telling me that our, uh, our plant, our port here in paper plant was going to close. You know, to get a call like the first thing in the morning, and my heart dropped. You know, you, you know, because I'm thinking 200 people with not going to have jobs. You know, not saying that we don't have any available here, but I hope that you know to God that they, you know, they find and they get reconnected. But it was just a sad case, and for that gentleman to call me and the rest of my colleagues up here, I mean, it was just like a sense of respect. You know, it's it's like the new normal instead of hearing it out in the street. Uh, he, I think he referred to it, he didn't want me to hear it at the gas pump that they were closing. He had all his information as to why they had to come up with that decision. I mean, that's the, the apex of respect for leaders. You know, this is a thankless job that we have. 
and he didn't have to do that. You know, he took all that time to tell us because he was concerned about the 200 employees also. So I just wanted to share that with you and uh, certainly want to, you know, pray for those families and those, those employees and that they, you know, come out on top of this, you know, this news. And then lastly, I'm just filled with a whole bunch of here. And then lastly, I'd like to say we were working on the Tuskegee Airmen Memorial and we have reached our goal. As a matter of fact, we went over that. The state of Alabama awarded us $54,000. Y'all can clap for that, $54,000. <laughs> so, so while they're in the business of tearing down uh, all these uh, stupid things and all this other kind of stuff, I think that's the wrong word to say it, but anyway, uh, we will have be building uh, in 2021 the uh, Tuskegee Airmen Memorial uh, dedication in Port Huron, just beyond the uh, uh, freighters up there in that spot. So uh, I just want to thank you. I just wanted to share those things with you because, you know, we have to be more plugged in. And I think the more that we can uh, communicate and be transparent and let you know what we're doing up here and what is happening as far as your city and how you can help and embrace that and make a difference. So that's what we want to do. So thank you and thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Is there anyone else that has anything to add? Uh, Councilmember Harris. Get back to it. You know, there's, there's a kind of forgotten crew in here that uh, made the election really go well. I just want to thank the, the city clerk's office. Yeah. And as an old comrade of the, the letter, sir, letter carrier division of the Postal Service, I think they both went a long ways to make sure that, that the election worked well in the precinct and with the mail order ballot. So uh, two thumbs up and uh, let's, let's go in the wind. Thank you. Anything else to come before the council? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Meeting adjourned.